Hey cruisers, it's Barb. Let's talk about things that the new cruisers here must do. Things that experienced cruisers do all the time, but they don't tell you about it. So today we're going to go over a few of those things so you have a step ahead of everyone else. Let's get started. The first thing that you want to make sure that you take care of is when you drop your luggage off at the porter to take up on the ship, please keep your carry-on bag with you. Make sure inside that carry-on bag you have your cruise documents, your set sail pass, your passport, your birth certificate, any type of documents that you need to get on the ship, please put them in your cruise carry-on. If you have them in your other bag, and the porter takes them to the ship, it's going to be extremely hard for you to pull those bags back and retrieve the documents. Also, medications. A lot of people don't think about this, but in the event that your luggage happens to get lost or they can't find your luggage in a timely manner, sometimes your luggage doesn't even get delivered to your cruise room until 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, sometimes even later. Um, if you've got your medication in those bags and you need to take something maybe before dinner, you're not going to have it. So please pack all your medicine right in that carry-on bag. The next thing that you want to have in your carry-on, if you choose, is a bathing suit. If you've got kids, put their bathing suits in your carry-on because if you get on the ship early, you can start taking advantage of your vacation immediately. So the pools will be open. Sometimes you'll have the water slides open. It just depends on the weather and what's happening. But if you have your bathing suit, you can quickly go into one of the restrooms on the pool deck, change, and then start having a good time, enjoying that vacation. The next thing that you wanna do is when you board the ship, put your phone on airplane mode immediately. You are subject to high charges if you don't, unless you got the internet plan from the cruise. And if you did, you'll log into their internet, you'll access the ship's Wi-Fi, and you'll be good to go. But if you didn't, please make sure you put your phone in that airplane mode. You do not want to make or receive calls. You do not want to make or receive texts or access data. And once you're at sea, it's considered a ship to shore call. So you're not on your carrier's plan. So even though when you're at home, you could call, maybe you have unlimited, you can call as much as you want, you can text as much as you want, but when you're at sea, the same rules do not apply. I have heard of people getting bills when they've gotten home from cruises that have been hundreds of thousands of dollars even. You don't wanna to have to deal with that. Some carriers do have what they call a cruise plan. Just be careful and read the fine print. Usually you're still being charged like $1.99 a minute to talk, 50 cents or so per megabyte for downloads, and they also charge you the $20 fee or whatever it is to sign up for that plan. So just do your research on the plan. If not, turn that phone off, get the cruise's internet. And if you really think you're gonna get that internet plan, do it before you set sail. It's always cheaper to buy things before you get on the ship. Once you get on the ship, you're going to pay the regular price. Once in a while, they might have a sale, but don't count on it. Okay, next up is the muster station. The new muster station process is so much easier. In the old days, you had to wear the life jackets. Everybody had to go out on the deck of the ship and stand in a group of like 200 people. And you had to wait until everyone showed up that was supposed to be on the ship before they would let you you know, go back into your room and go about your activities. But today it's so much easier. So once you get on the ship, you wanna go ahead and log into your Royal Caribbean app and you actually use the ship's Wi-Fi. It's okay if you didn't buy that internet plan, you will be able to access the ship's Wi-Fi for free when you're accessing the Royal Caribbean app. So there are some videos that they are gonna show you, which I'm gonna show you here. And also there's a horn that you need to listen to. So you listen to this horn along with any other instructions. If you have children with you, you wanna make sure that you watch a, an additional video that's really geared towards the kids. So after you're done watching your video, you wanna to report to your muster station. Your muster station information can be found on your CPAS card. And if you don't have that yet, you can find it on your set sail pass or even in your Royal Caribbean app, it's gonna tell you 
where your muster station is. Sometimes it's out on the deck. Sometimes it's in a restaurant. Sometimes it's in the casino. <laughs> so it depends on where your room is in relation to where your muster station is. So go find your muster station. There'll be a crew member there. They're gonna check you in. They're gonna check off that you watch the video and that you listen to the horn. That's it. It literally takes like two minutes and you're done. And then you can go on. You're gonna hear announcements probably most of the day because if people don't check in for their muster station, they will be called out. You're gonna hear names over the loudspeaker, such and such, please report to your muster station because we can't leave the port until everyone is checked in. So don't be the person that holds the entire ship up. Just as soon as you get on, go do your muster station and you're done. Okay, next thing that you wanna know, and this really is an insider's tip for many cruisers, as soon as you get on the ship, if you're on a ship that requires you to make your dining reservations once you board, do it immediately. In other words, if you bought specialty dining, you know, you want to go to Chops for a nice steak or you want to go to Izumi and you've pre-purchased that plan, go to one of those restaurants immediately and make your reservations. I have been there before and I have seen it happen to people where they wait until towards the end of the day and they start trying to make their reservations. And even though they pre-purchase that dining package, they're pretty much full and they can't get the table that they want. I saw a man arguing with our concierge in I think the Diamond Lounge one time because he couldn't get him a reservation in chops for his party of 10, but he waited too long. So do it first before you do anything else. Do your muster station first, but then go make your reservations. So if you have a specialty dining package like the three night package or even the unlimited package, you can go to one of the specialty dining restaurants and make all the reservations at one time, if that's what you wanna do. Usually when you first buy that dining package, the first night reservation is done for you for the very first night of the ship. Most people don't care to do it at that time and you can change that too, okay? So get that done. The next thing that I do, and most people don't do this, I do, is run quickly to the main dining room. Even though you have your CPAS card and on your CPAS card, it's gonna tell you what your dining table is and what time you're dining. I always go and confirm that that's actually what I booked because sometimes I will see that, you know, maybe we're traveling with a group of eight and we had all of our reservations, what they call linked together. But when I checked in with the main dining room, they weren't linked together. And we had all different tables all around the whole dining room. So as soon as you get on this ship, I just go down there, I confirm that the table's how I want it, you know, as far as how many people are sitting with us, and it's at the right time. If there's anything wrong with your dining reservation, they can fix it right then. It's better to do it now than to try to do it at dinner time when everybody's falling into that dining room, the waiters are so busy, that it's gonna be really hard for them to take time and figure that out for you. So do it right away. So many of you have maybe have never been on a ship before. So here's a little tip. You're gonna hear people talk about port side and starboard side. Here's how you remember that. Port side has four letters and so does left. So when somebody's talking about port side, they're talking about the left side of the ship. When they're talking about starboard side, they're talking about the right side of the ship. I can't tell you how many times I have gotten lost before I knew this rule. I knew my, let's say I knew my cabin was on the port side and I would be wandering around starboard side. Never knew if I was going towards the front of the ship and never knew if I was heading towards the back of the ship. If you're on a large ship, you might be laughing at me right now, but just wait, it gets very confusing. So there are little tips that you'll learn depending on the ship. Each ship is a little different, but there are little clues that are gonna help you figure out if you're heading forward or aft. Some ships, if you look down at the carpet, they have these little fish that look like they're swimming and the fish are always going to swim in the direction of the front of the ship. So if you're looking at the carpet and the fish are going forward, you know what side of the ship that you're on. Okay. Others have these little room number plates next to your cabin door and it looks like a wave. 
So it might, you know, it has a wave and it has your room number if you're in cabin 809, let's say. The wave has a high point on it. The high point of that wave is always facing the front of the ship. So just pay attention to which ship you're on and you're going to notice those little indicators. Life will get so much easier once you have a sense of direction and where you are. That's it. So you know some insider tips. Keep coming back to my channel if you felt like you learned anything at all. And I promise I'll keep posting other tips for new cruisers as well as our veteran cruisers. So have a good time and enjoy your cruise. Happy sailing.